Hello, grade 12s. Today we will learn how to find the gradient of the tangent to a curve. Remember, a tangent to a curve is a straight line that touches the curve at a point. And we also must remember that to find the gradient of a straight line, we need two points on the line. Keep these points in mind as we join Donovan and MacGyver who will take us through the steps to find the gradient of a tangent to a curve. They will use the equations and functions that we've looked at in previous lessons. Before we go in search of the tangent, I want to just go back to the idea of the equations and solving them for a moment. These are the equations that we found. You said you'd simply solve them. Can you show us how you were planning on solving them? Okay, I'll show you. I'll do this one as an example. First, I'd rewrite the equation like this. So that we have the equation of the volume equal to the volume at the point on the graph. Then I would multiply out the brackets and we would get 400 minus 80x plus 4x squared, all multiplied by x. Then we multiply the brackets by the x. If we simplify that, we get 4x cubed minus 80x squared plus 400x minus 450. This is a third degree equation. And we learned how to solve these using the factor and remainder theorems. Keep going. f of x equals 4x cubed minus 80x squared plus 400x minus 450. Now I'd have to start looking for values of x that make this equal zero. I think this might take a while. Hang on a second. Before you carry on, I want to suggest to you that you give up this approach. Because you're quite right, it will definitely take you a really long time to find the x value that makes this expression equal to zero. Unless you are lucky enough to find a third degree equation with at least one obvious value of x for which the function value is zero, you are unlikely to be able to solve the equation. Okay, so you're suggesting that I abandon that approach? Yes, I think we need to abandon it and see if we can find a more efficient method. But the good news is that your thinking has actually led to an approach that will help us find a solution and your approach is very close to the approach used by mathematicians when they invented what we know today as differential calculus. Really? Tell me more. Let's go back to the graph and our original thinking for a moment. We said if we move this line up until we get one intersection in the region of interest. Right, now do you remember what we said about this line? We said that it was a tangent to the curve at the turning point. And if we could find the coordinates of this point, we would have found our solution because at the turning point, the volume is as large as it can possibly be. Quite right. Now tell me something about this line. What is its gradient? Well, it's a horizontal line. So it has no gradient. Can you say that more accurately? Sure thing. More accurately, we would say it has a gradient of zero. Good. And if you can find the point where the tangent to the graph has a gradient of zero, then we will have found the turning point. And we would have solved our problem. And that, MacGyver, is the problem mathematicians faced a long time ago. Finding the gradient of a tangent to a curve at the point on the curve. Let's quickly go over how our problem has developed. I can summarize it as follows. Our first objective was to find the coordinates of the turning point of a graph. The y value of this point would then give us the maximum volume of our box, and the x value would give us the length of the side of the box we would need to get the largest volume. 
we then realized that we would know the coordinates of the turning point when we knew where the gradient of the tangent to the graph was equal to zero. And now I've told you that the more general problem is to find the gradient of the tangent to the graph at any point on the graph. A challenge that you said was so tough that mathematicians had to invent new mathematics to solve the problem. Wow. It's really interesting, isn't it? Now, are you ready to move on to the next step in our journey of discovery? I'm ready. Let's go. What we're going to do now is have a look at how mathematicians developed their mathematics to solve this problem. Cool. Let's do it. In order to do that, we're going to move away from our box problem for a while because the function involved is a little bit tough as a starter. I think we should start with an easier function. What function do you suggest? I want to work with the function y equals x squared. I have a picture of it here. To start with, I want us to determine the gradient of the tangent at the point 1, 1. Can I give it a try? Go ahead. OK. If I understand our problem correctly, we want to know what the gradient is of the tangent to the graph at this point. In other words, the gradient of this line. That's right. That can't be too difficult. OK. Why don't you give it a try? To find the gradient of a straight line, I need two points on the line. Let's see. I know this point is 1, 1. And all I need is another point. I don't have another point. <laughs> don't be too disheartened. This is exactly what mathematicians many years ago got stuck to. To calculate the gradient, we need two points since the gradient is a measure of the change between two points. But we only have one point. So how did they get out of that mess? They simply chose another point. Another point? Yes. Let me show you what I mean. Let me choose this one here. And then they drew a line through these two points. Then they calculated the gradient of this line. But that's different to the gradients that we are looking for. Oh, sure. It isn't exactly right, but it is an approximation. Ah, oh, and that's what happened when we looked at the area under a curve problem. We started with a bad approximation and improved on it. Is that what we're going to do here? Improve our approximation? Very clever, MacGyver. You've caught on right away. You have completely grasped the idea. But there's still some work to be done here. Can you determine the gradient of this line I just drew? Finally, something I know I can do. This isn't even a challenge. This point here is 1, 1. And this one is 0, 0. To determine the gradient, I want to calculate the vertical change and the horizontal change. The vertical change is 1 minus 0, which equals 1. And the horizontal change is 1 minus 0, which equals 1. Which gives me the gradient, which is 1 divided by 1, which equals 1. Great. Now, as we said before, the gradient that you just found is a very rough approximation of the gradient of the tangent. We want to improve on it. How do you suggest we do that? I suggest that we take the other point and move it closer to 1, 1. As in this picture, we moved it to the point on the graph that has an x value of 1 half and calculate the gradient again. The gradient of that line would certainly be a better approximation of the gradient of the tangent than our first attempt. And then what do we do? I suggest that we take the other point and move it still closer to 1, 1. As in, in this picture, we moved it to a point on the graph that has an x value of 3 quarters and calculate the gradient again. Good thinking, MacGyver. But I think we should leave it there for today. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Remember to try the task video at the end of this series and to look at our website for more resources. Goodbye.